All right, here we are, another episode of Adventures in Real Estate. How about that? It is an adventure. Fancy, fancy. <laughs> Does he need his mic closer to him? No? Okay, okay. good. So good. he can hear you okay. Good, awesome. very good. All right. I'm the one that gets the spit guard. <laughs> yeah, really. I, 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 don't, I don't know why they put that in here. Because <laughs> you're spittily. I, I guess I am. <laughs> I guess I am. Well, we're here with David Tuttle. He's head of our investor relations division here at Darwin German Real Estate. And uh, so we thought we'd talk about him, what he's doing, how the heck we became friends, and yep. go through that. So welcome, David. Thank you. Thank you. So how long ago did we meet? 20 years. 20. Almost exactly 20 years ago. How do you know that it was 20 years ago? Um, because I actually went back and looked at uh, the deal in DeSoto that i listed for you, uh, and it was 20 years ago. Okay, yeah. so so you, you cold called I me, cold right? called you, I, so I started my career in real estate as a commercial broker with a national outfit, and I um, uh, sold office property, mainly an industrial property, and if you remember, you owned a few small office buildings in DeSoto, and so I cold called you, and I think you might have hung up on me or said no a few times, but I was persistent. And then you gave me a shot, you yep. gave me a shot, and that was the beginning of, um, what's turned out to be a 20 year friendship. Yeah. yeah I think we started out, you know, working together and uh, realized we like to hang out and had some common interests. And here we are 20 years later. Yeah, that's amazing. I actually have a friend that lasted 20 years. That's unusual. There's more than one. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So you yeah. were a commercial broker. I was a commercial broker. Yeah. And uh, how many deals did you do? I mean, in that time um, I did probably about $300 million in transactions in my career, uh, mostly representing sellers of, of uh, mid-size office property um, and I worked uh, towards the, the, the end uh, I worked on some development deals and I worked on uh, kind of across Texas I've worked on mostly office property so um, and after after 20 years just to kind of continue the story uh, last year almost a year ago last July if you remember we were uh, actually on vacation together with the wives and uh, it came up that uh, Jeremy Wolcott had uh, become so uh, successful that he had decided to retire to Mexico, which is actually a, not true because he still works <laughs> works with us. But okay, but you needed retire. right partial retirement. But he, you needed boots on the ground is is the way the conversation went, right. if I remember correctly. And I had been looking for a way out of uh, working as a fee broker and to get on the uh, investment side on the equity side. And it just, it was it was really, if you remember, it was amazing. Just, it was like click, click, click. It, I think uh, that was July. And by August, uh, I was officially working for you. And I actually um, stopped brokering about the same time. But yeah. what's funny about that, I remember the conversation. I was actually in CVS and I was talking to you and and I was looking, I was actually buying a, uh, a birthday card for my wife. And I'm talking to you on the phone and I'm saying, man, I need to hire somebody to replace Jeremy. And you said, well, who does that person look like? And I'm like, well, actually <laughs> they need this. to. And I paused for a second and I said, I need you. <laughs> I do remember that. I need somebody who's a that. good bullshitter that can talk to anybody that is just friendly and outgoing, honest, knows real estate and knows what he's doing. And I am so happy that worked out because you're doing spectacular. Yep. And here's, the, here's where the truth be told, I took the opportunity back to my wife, who you know very well. And, um, you know, I think sometimes when you go to work for a company or for a person, uh, half of the decision is, um, you know, do I trust this person? Do they have the character and the reliability that I'm looking for, uh, you know, as a company owner and operator? And like those that we didn't have to consider those things. Like the decision was half made because we already knew you. You know, we've already been in, we've already been in business in other areas. So, well, we knew, so we that's half the decision. So that, you know, the real decision was, uh, is it time to transition out of fee brokerage and go to work on this side of the business? And my wife, my wife's response was, as long as you can pay the bills, do whatever you want. <laughs> Hopefully you're still paying the bills. I'm still paying the bills. Yes. I'm okay, good. Because uh, actually, let's talk about that. Because you had a before you were in real estate brokerage, what were you? What were you doing? I was in the newspaper business. I sold advertising for the newspaper uh, in the newspaper industry. So I started out as a delivery driver, then I sold, then I managed locally in Dallas. The chain bought a paper out of state, I moved. Then they bought the Fort Worth paper and I moved back. And that was 99 or 2000. And uh, I got into the real estate business right after that. I, so I, I've always been in sales. 
Right, and you actually managed sales. teams there, I right? did. I managed large sales teams. I hired a lot of people. I've trained hundreds of salespeople. And, um, you know, it was all very, uh, very much about the systems and the procedures and setting goals uh, as a group and then dry, drilling down to the individual salespeople and making sure they were meeting their goals so the group could meet their goals also. Right, and that ended up being great history, um, great yeah. setup for where you are now. Absolutely. Because uh, you actually have one employee now, don't you? I have you? an employee, yes. And who is that? That is Garrett Stroud. Yeah, Garrett Stroud. I know him quite well. My yes. son-in-law. Yes. Actually, I'm sorry. I said sorry. that wrong. No, no. Stepson. 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 No, Stepson. Garrett, Garrett's been great. Garrett's a recent college grad, uh, and he came in over the summer. And this was, you know, I've been here a year, and it's kind of like t changing a, a car on a, or a tire on a moving car, right? Yes, Because we've had to develop systems and procedures in the uh, investor relations department while we were raising money. Um, in fact, a great example would be all the way back to Gold Creek, which was my first raise last fall. And we still had a manual uh, signature process for subscription agreements. If, 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 all, if all of you remember, you would have to print it, yeah. sign it, and send it to us. Um, and now we have an e-signature process. And we, we initiated that. Uh, that program in the middle of Gold Creek. So again, changing the changing the wheel on a moving car. And and as we progress throughout the year, we've be, we've put more we've put more policies and procedures in place that have kind of streamlined the whole investor relation experience for for our partners. Hopefully, right. So your first raise was Gold Creek. It was Gold Creek. Yep. And how big of a raise was that? Where were we at? Eight million on that. Eight yep. million yep. along with private equity. Yep. We were over fourteen or yep. so. Yep. And Jeremy and I were he, Jeremy worked really closely with me to help me understand the process, and and uh, and uh, we just we just made it happen. And then and uh, you know then after that, almost immediately after that, we started working on Valley Center. Okay, and what is Valley Center? So Valley Center is our is our new corporate headquarters uh, building right here, right here. So right the, right we're in our in brand new center. training room. Um, uh, and a funny story about that. So, you know, as an office specialist, I've done tenant representation and landlord representation on the leasing side. And the story goes, uh, you know, uh, be, towards the end of last year, Darwin said, hey, we need our own space. Uh, we need a corporate office and we need a training facility. Go out and find me something to lease. And if you remember, we went out on tour last summer yep. or into the fall, and we looked at a whole bunch of office space. And none of it, you know, we looked at WeWork. Remember how yep. much that was a foot? Oh, what was like it? Like 180 a foot or yeah, something it was crazy. ridiculous. So, and so we started. What, what and we did, wouldn't even be able to be in there right no. now because of COVID. Right, exactly. So we would be absolutely exactly. just. Touched. And it didn't solve our problem of needing training space because uh, the, 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 the price to rent the training space that we would perhaps only use occasionally initially was just, it was, it was cost prohibitive. And I, and I remember at some point we were in some building looking at space and Darwin just said, this isn't working, let's buy a building, find me a building to buy. So that's what I did for 20 years. So I really, really enjoyed the process of finding Valley Center, negotiating the deal, helping with a lender, getting the loan lined up, raising the money for, for the for the deal, and then closing it out. It really was it was an awesome experience. I yeah, really you've it. done it a hundred times. I've done and it, that's but not from this it. side. This side was a lot different. I learned a lot. I learned a few things I didn't know that I didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> so. you know, we're all learning every yep. day. Yep. But uh, let's talk about this deal then. Uh, sure. Val um, so we have this building, we find this building. How did you find the building? Um, well, it, it had been listed earlier in the year and it had made, you know, I probably looked at almost 200 properties in DFW and it made the cut down to, you know, I had a dirty dozen and I think I sent you out to two or three just to do drive-bys and this was one of them. Yep. Um, but by the time we got interested in it, the seller had actually taken it off the market. So uh, if you remember, we had to um, re-engage them in an off-market yes. deal and they were fairly reluctant sellers at that point. Yeah. One of the partners didn't want to sell at all. No. Nope, they didn't. And the other one said, "Yeah, let's sell it." But they had debt due. That that was a thing. That's but, what it was. Yeah, but they, they had, already but they already had their debt lined up. So, and I think they actually may have executed on their new debt before we closed the building, because they had it came due somewhere in the middle of the escrow. Or I think they I think they got an extended. Did they extend it? They, okay, they extended that's what it was. It for two years. But we, but I reengaged with a broker. They had they had a third party broker, um, and we just walked down the path with them. And you know, a, a big part of why we were able to even engage them much less buy this deal is because we're credible buyers yeah. you know we don't put deals under contract unless we're ready to close we know we, for the most part which know. is good you had to kind of sell that because we don't have a huge name in the office no space. no but we had so much track record in the multifamily space that 
uh, it really established our credibility really early in the process. And I think through, because remember, we closed the week that Governor Abbott shut down Texas, right? So that leading up to that, to the closing at the end of March, uh, we had to dance a little bit with the seller, and, and even through the whole escrow process, we were able to prove to them our, our level of professionalism, um, and which helped move, advance advance the deal, and I think advance the negotiations when we were trying to buy it. It did, and it was actually a crazy time because we had, first off, we had to buy something in a very specific geographic location. Yes. We wanted that halo just north of DFW yep. Airport yep. so that we can draw people in for our training center from all over DFW. So really, where we are right now, in about 30 minutes, you can be McKinney, Frisco. Yep. Downtown Dallas, downtown, downtown Fort Worth. Ex Arlington. Well, the other so. thing about this building is it's what I call a neighborhood building. So all of our our closest competition is less than a mile away on the major freeways, but they're all Class A properties. And their rates are, for the most part, 8 to $12 higher than ours are per mm -hmm. square foot. So I initially when I found this building, and, and this is what we were targeting, you know, in that golden halo above the airport in DFW, I like this building because we didn't have any immediate comp competition. And through underwriting, what I, as I started mapping out the leasing competition, the Class A buildings that are a mile away are not our competition. Our competition are the high B buildings, which is what we are, and you're four or five miles away from, the, from the, those competitive properties. So this property, uh, we've got about 50 tenants, and the majority of them live within a mile or two of the property. So I like the neighborhood buildings. And yes. I like the other thing I liked about this, and we talk about this a lot, was um, we didn't have any major rollover exposure. And rollover means when a lease expires. Mm -hmm. Our largest tenant's only in 7% of the building. So, it, you know, when you have a lot of small tenants, it's a little bit more management intensive. But if you lose one or two of those small tenants, they're easier to replace. Well, it's the same thought process with apartments where you've got a bunch of tenants. So as you lose a few, no big deal. Right. It doesn't hurt right. you. It's the same situation here. You don't have one or two major tenants that if they Absolutely. move out, your your value just crashes. Right. And in an 80,000 square foot building, if we had a 20,000 or a 30,000 square foot tenant, we probably wouldn't have bought this deal. That would have been, because yeah. no matter what, they would have had three to seven years left on their lease and we would have had a lender problem probably with that. We'd have to yeah. reserve for that. So I, that might've been a deal killer if this wasn't such a, a high tenant count property. So that really getting into the office, which is our first syndication into office yep. buildings and had to train our our investors hey this is how it's the same this is how it's yep. different but a lot of it was real similar being a neighborhood office building yep. and a multi-tenant yep. a whole lot of tenants plus not only that we move into the building we move into the building and we spend seven thousand dollars a month in rent for our space yep, yep. so that it that adds so that's um Eighty-four thousand dollars a year. Yeah. That adds about uh, about a million dollars yeah. in value to the property. Right. The other thing too, just that, by us moving in, and and the fact that we're on site managing the property. Brian Holly's managing the property now. Um, is, first of all, it's helped us immensely because it was the same strategy in this building as it was the multifamily uh, uh, properties in our portfolio. We worked very closely with the tenants, with the hardship hardship yep. tenants that needed help. We we done that across our multifamily portfolio and in this building and it's resulted in a, a much lower delinquency rate than what we actually had anticipated and being and being on site is going to help us maintain the tenant retention right easier to keep a tenant yep then replace a tenant. absolutely absolutely and uh, we also because we closed right when COVID hit they shut March 24th down. it was that week <laughs> and so we negotiated there at closing I thought the seller was a little bit brilliant on, on doing it. It was at noon. Activity. It was at noon and we closed at 430. So we 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 had that. I remember we had that conversation yeah. at noon yeah, on it, closing well, day. That's when the commission nectomies happen is yes. the day of. <laughs> because uh, we found that, hey, with COVID, there's a risk that we could lose 30% of the income. Yeah. So we basically said 30% of the income equals X. Let's figure it's a six month process. So we reserved out and the yep. seller put that into escrow. I'm going to say the seller. Right. Oh, oh, it was the brokers. <laughs> it, it was mainly the brokers right. that put up that rent guarantee, right. but it's held by the escrow company so that anybody that doesn't pay rent during this time frame for whatever reason, um, then we get we, made whole. Then we get made whole. So we protected ourselves yep. from the downside to protect the investors, which, you know, there's always a tool in our tool chest to make things better. Did the seller suggest that? I think they did. 
somehow or did we suggest that? no i suggested did you that, suggest yes, that okay i did because we need to have some We've, way... i've moved on into the next deal in my head I <laughs> it, that's okay that's okay now i suggested that but the seller he was smooth i was impressed yeah. with how he had said hey we'll put up x amount and right. the brokers, and the brokers have to everyone has to feel some pain and but percentage wise right. the brokers felt out. a lot and interestingly more enough too i think our draws off of that uh, escrow have been fairly nominal up to this point i mean we'll we've got through the end of september was our six month period so we'll reconcile at the end but yeah that's been a lifesaver exactly kind of lifesaver. yeah so we did lose a few tenants yep. um, one was a travel company that books yep. over a year in advance and i feel really bad for him but well we've also renewed some tenants i i, I handle the leasing here at this property brian holly does the management um, but since I'm on site and I have experience, I've handled the leasing and we've been able to extend some leases uh, for some tenants that have rolled over in the last five months. So uh, there's some, there's some good things happening as well as our remodel in being in the home stretch. Oh, and our remodel. This has been absolutely amazing. That's a whole nother webinar. We're going to we're going to show you all the whole building on a whole on, on a whole nother webinar, webinar. Yeah. But just to give a little idea. We did the same thing on the office building that we do on apartments. Mm -hmm which is we go in there up front, we fix any deferred maintenance, plus we then improve it so yep. that we can demand higher rents. Or, and, and right now we're finishing up our entire lobby, which is completely redone. It's we awesome. already did all the hallways, bathrooms. paint, carpet, the bathrooms with tile. Yep. And we're about to land, we're about to redo all the landscaping. Yep, landscaping. We've got next. signage going up today. Yeah, yeah. Your actually, name and know, lights. I don't know if you can hear a banging going on behind me, but they're actually putting up a sign on the other side yep. of the wall right behind me yep. for our training center yep. here. And so this has been. This yeah, has Valley been, Center's been a great deal. This the, you got to come by here. Well, we'll have to buy some more office buildings next year. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see how all this is going because with the work from home thing, I mean, yeah, two different we'll theories. The WeWorks where they're all crammed in there in one small spot. There's no social distancing whatsoever. No. And so I think those WeWorks, they might have some, some problems. And also companies, so they might need more space than they've had before. Is a I, lot I of think the that there'll be, a, I, I personally think, and, and I kind of still follow the office sector, especially in DFW, um, I still think that people will have a need to have office space. As we found out, we started coming in to the office mm -hmm. and our, our level of uh, the quality of our collaboration started going up. And I Absolutely. just, I mean, there, I think there are certain jobs, certain businesses that remote lends itself well to, but I, I, I don't think there's going to be a catastrophic loss of tenants to that. I think that, and, the, and if some tenants transition out, like we had one tenant here that was in about 26, 2700 square feet mm -hmm. and they sent everyone home. They already had remote employees across the country, but they sent their office staff home and now they're in two executive suites and that suits them fine. But for every one of those types of companies, there are other companies that either need an office for their clients to come to or for their employees to collaborate. And so I think it's just a matter of where we are in the cycle with the economic downturn relative to the pandemic. You know, this is not, I don't believe, the new normal. I think it's a new adjustment towards a new normal. Right. And there are or a minor be, adjustment towards a new There normal. are going to be people that can work from home, but a lot of companies can't. And those that can't might need more space than they're used to so Maybe that they so. can social Maybe distance. So. I think, But I think in the meantime, while we wait to see how this shakes out, what we're we're playing a little bit more offense than defense, just like with our, yes. our apartment portfolio and making sure that we're reaching out to people that become delinquent and, and not let it get too far out of hand. Oh, absolutely. So that's been, absolutely. That's been a yeah. So Valley Center has been a great experience. And uh, I think we're probably we are having a lot of success with the mini suites we call them, yep. executive suites. Executive suites, yeah. Where you're just renting an auto, you're just renting five, one, six hundred bucks a month. Easy. Yeah, five hundred dollars. Yeah. Because if you if you have to work from home now, how many people can actually work from home with no. kids and dogs yep. and cats yep. and, and all the distractions? So they actually want an office. So they'll spend four or five hundred dollars sure. just to have their it's own small decision. office. And in a neighborhood center like this, mm -hmm. that makes it even better. Yeah, because their house is a mile away. They're going home for lunch. Exactly. So, exactly. so this this has been a great deal. And so we are also finishing up our raise on our next big purchase. Yep. That's Oakview. Oakview okay. Apartments. Oakview. And how far how far along are we on? Oh, uh, we've got we're we got to raise ten seven fifty, and we're in the mid nines right now nine five nine six. So we're about a million dollars away. That ten last, spots. Ten, ten spots. Ten spots <laughs> yep. at hundred grand a piece. Spots, there yep. you go. And then of course we just finished the corners. I know. I You're was about to say sure. that. I was about <laughs> absolutely because that one that one is a huge feather in your cap. Yep. Uh, because the corners, it's a smaller deal. Yeah. And it was a 506B, so it was a... Uh, Open to sophisticated. Only sophi sophisticated and accredited, but we yeah. could not advertise it. 
Right. So all we did was take our list and call yep. everybody on our list yep. and uh, filled that up how fast? I don't want to say it was less than two days, but it was less than two days. <laughs> <laughs> less than two days. Much of the chagrin to, to a lot of our investors. I mean, we, we tried to prepare people for the fact that it was going to go quickly. It went a lot quicker than we thought, though. Yeah, so we, we actually have a waiting list. It was $3 million in two days. Yep. We raised $3 million from around 50 people, and um, about two-thirds of those were sophisticated. So yep. we're still under our 35, uh, per the SEC, 35 sophisticated investors on that deal. So. Yeah, so that but it, was, had, it was went fast. It went fast. Yeah, a lot. I mean, if you stopped to think about it, you were done. You were out. It was, it was yeah, and yeah, absolutely. People absolutely. that are on vacation, didn't <laughs> right, listen to right. it, get around to well, it. Well, and I think also, you know, that... We've never had a raise since I've been here, and really, I think before that, that that went that quickly. Um, and so that's not something that I think our partners are used to. And as we expand our partner base, um, in fact, I, um, I want to say on on Oakview, I don't have the numbers for the corners, but I want to say on Oakview, probably around 20% of our investors are first-time DGRE investors. That is awesome. So as we continue to expand our partner list, uh, we're going to see more and more new first time. I, I don't call them new because most of them are experienced, but first time DGRE investors are, are anxious to get into our deals too. So um, I think it's just going to be a, a, just a fact of how we operate that our that our raises are going to go more quickly. Maybe not two days, but you know what, twenty percent that is, that is a that is a great number. Yeah, 20%. but look at the other side of that and think about that for a second. 80% of the repeat. people that invested are repeat yes, investors. Yes. And so generally about 80 to 85%. Well, and part, of, part of what we've done to get organized in Garrett and I in the investor relations department is we've actually created a gigantic spreadsheet with all of our partners and every deal that we, that they've invested yeah. in. We can now kind of see the cycle of how people, you know, some people invest in every other deal. Some people invest in every single deal, no matter what, uh, which right. is a, which is a strategy that we advocate, of course, because, you know, uh, you can kind of average things out. Yeah, kind of dollar cost averaging dollar cost on your average. investing because right. we we don't say and put there's all a whole your money there's a whole one. webinar on that there's there a is whole a whole webinar, webinar on that we're gonna do a webinar on that because so. we say don't put all of your money into one basket right. spread it out it's just like oil wells where we're in Texas let's talk about oil right. wells you don't want to put all your investment into one oil well right. you want to invest in ten because some of them are base hits some of them are grand slams. Yep. Um, every once in a while, well, there's one that barely meets the threshold, but uh, but you know it is investing. There is yep. a certain amount of risk. It is illiquid, so um, so you do have to make sure that you spread that out, look and know what you're investing in, and that's for every deal, not just the ones that we're in. Sure, absolutely, I agree completely. And I and I think you know if we if we want to kind of circle back around and talk a little bit more about what is the investor relations department do here at DGRE, and you know what are our goals over time, and are we are really I mean. Garrett's essentially a customer service rep, and we are uh, a tool for the partners and for the potential partners to utilize to help them understand not only what passive in, uh, investing is all about, but how our program, our syndication program works and our 30 year track record. So we are providers of information um, exactly, and we answer questions and we develop relationships with people. Uh, to where they know they can call us, the phone rings, we pick it up and we can help them through whatever they're, they're dealing well, with. Well, that, that's really because the title is investor relations. Yes. That is staying in contact with them, keeping your finger on the pulse of what's going on, whether it's good, bad, whatever it is, yes. to know what's happening. And something I've been impressed with that Garrett's been doing is he even recognized, hey, I talked to this lady right. who lives in Houston. Oh, wait, there, you know, a storm came through. Yeah. I'm going to call and check on her. So. Yeah. What's nice is is we all care about our investors, but also reaching out and checking on them also. I thought yeah. that was, you know, because it is really about the relate. It's a relationship Absolutely. business. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. when you're investing, you're investing in a relationship, not just in a property. Well, and it's interesting too, because now we're, as Jeremy was by himself before, and his bandwidth was this much, mm -hmm. and then I came on board, and it took me a little while to get trained, but essentially doubled the bandwidth, and now Garrett's on board, and that's expanding the bandwidth also to where, because when we do a raise, we sit down and, and we talk about, hey, who, who might be interested in this deal? And Jeremy's like, I you know, I have a relationship with this guy and that guy, and I'm like, oh, I've talked to this person, and now Garrett is at a point where he has a personal relationship yeah. with some folks. So we really want to be accessible um, and, you know, to keep being as transparent as we are and, and letting people know that you know there is, there is a path to financial freedom through passive investment with a syndicator like DGRE. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you're you're a great representative representative of uh, DGRE. I'm glad to have you, and so I look forward to a whole lot more success. If anybody wants to reach out to 
uh, David Tuttle. Yeah, it, David at DarwinGerman.com. Nice and simple. Yeah, or Darwinger Man if you want to do it man, phonetically right. at DarwinGerman.com. Yep. So uh, reach out and love to have you invest yep. and come into our training center when we have more people here. And we're having our first live event two days from now. Yep. And so we'll have a bunch of apartment owners in here along with a couple of brokers giving some updates on what's going on, what's happening. And also do some networking and yep. maybe do have a little bit of deal flow going on in there. I know That's there's exciting. a couple of properties that I'm gonna go ahead and tell them, hey, we're interested in selling these off market. Yep. So they can come on in and, and yep. hopefully we can get some more some more done. So it's be a good meeting. But uh, thank you all for joining us. I hope you Thanks. enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you. Good. Thanks. Bye.